I'd like to thank Bertrand and uh, Celine and uh, Marie Angelique and all the team. It's su such a pleasure to be here. And um, uh, yeah, I started this project in 1999. It's kind of a little project that grew out of hand. And uh, last two years, I've also been working on kind of connecting the dots. Uh, a lot of times, um, uh, we don't know much what's going on, and we really concentrate on Talbot and Daguerre. And there's a lot of other um, really um, a lot of other people were doing photography at the time. And so right now, the last two years, I've been slowly trying to connect the dots. So this is just, today I'm just gonna talk about uh, the paper negatives of Ippoli Bayan. So uh, he submits four letters between 1839 and 1846. Three of them are negatives and one is a direct positive. He submits them into the Academy of Science here in Paris. Now, I, I'm gonna just go into this. So in the Pli Cachete, the very first one, number 141, his very first process is actually a negative, and it was written on November 8th, 1839, and he deposited it a few days later, and then a few years later, he opened it. He requested it to be open. So in the Pli Cachete, you have two letters, the, the first letter from 1839, and then the second letter from 1841, and in that second letter, he, he is requesting it to open. Um, so the first letter, it, he doesn't write much in the first letter. Uh, he does write it on a Ministry of Finance um, uh, paper, so he's probably writing it at work, you know, rush, rushing to write something. He does sign it that he works at the Ministry of Finance. Um, and he doesn't give percentages, he just kind of roughly goes through. Um, but he does mention Daguerre and he does mention Talbot. On the second letter of 1841, uh, he again signs it that he works at the uh, as an employee at the Minister of Finance. And here he says he is pressured to open his first letter of uh, 1839 because B.O. has just read a letter from Talbot in the last session. So he feels really pressured to make sure that he is known, that he is doing his processes. And in this letter he says he has discovered three processes, but he will only talk about one now. So it's very interesting, very early on. In this letter, uh, he does modify the first letter. He does use, on um, this second letter, he talks about using potassium bromide instead of um, uh, sodium cl uh, chloride. So, and I should have put this earlier, but in the first letter, he actually deposits with his letter two photographs, which is pretty amazing. They are at the Academy of Science right now. Um, it, he writes that, uh, they were made, one, well, it's kind of confusing. It was made on October 24th, 1839, 18 minutes. I, it doesn't really say which one was made at that time, but one was. Now, like I said, I've been researching this for many years. When I first saw this in the early 2000s, um, the far image, there was actually an image. And now, recently, there's no image, as you can see. So it's quite a shame. But it's actually of, um, it's uh, two, two, two people, kind of. It's a bust. And then you can see in the other one is a um, building. Like I was there, I was just there like three days ago. I, I, I suggested they go into Mylar and, uh, and then they, they're, she, they're actually separate from the letters now. So I feel a little safe, I feel a little safer. And, they, and not anyone can look at them anymore. So you have to really ask letters. So, but don't ask to see the letters. <laughs> so anyway, so let's go on to the first recipe. So I did these, like I said, in 2002, I went back to the Eastman house and because I had done all this research on the direct positive, I thought, well, I have to do his negatives. You know, let's just finish this up. So uh, very easily, and he doesn't give percentages, so I was looking at the time. What is, what is other people doing at that time? How does he figuring this out? So he dips the paper in a weak solution of um, sodium chloride, it hangs to dry, then he puts uh, brushes on, silver nitrate, and then he uh, dries it. Uh, and then he uses, um, uh, iodine vapor. Now, this is this is he's following the daguerreotype. He does talk about following the daguerreotype. This is not this. This is a, a vapor chamber. A later on, a later uh, chamber that they made. Uh, I guess more of an American style um, at the Eastman House. So I was just using that, but it was it's the same idea what he would have used. And then I went out into uh, the gardens of the Eastman House and uh, used a camera. And then this white, oops, oops, what is this? This white, oops. This, uh, this white, he called it fountain heads. They're out in the garden. It's great, great, per, uh, great for um, Bayard because it's lots of high contrast. And then the far image, uh, that's this mercury chamber they had there once. So I put it in some mercury uh, vapor. And then he actually used hypo. It says in the letter he uses hypo in this letter. I'm looking at Cecile. So he, in this letter he uses hypo, but he does change it. But anyways, in this letter he uses hypo. 
let me see. And this is a bit slow. There, oops, it's jumping ahead. Oops. Doesn't want to go the next one. Oops, there, oh, it jumped two. It jumped two. Let me see. Give me just a second. Push back. Oh, no. No. All right, okay, I'll do this. So anyway, so um, I was thinking about this, and uh, at the Getty, they have a second album um, of Bayard. It's a much later album. But uh, I realized, okay, so this is kind of confusing. This photograph was from this page where the arrow is. It's no longer attached. Happened very long time ago. And above it is written um, bromide, um, silver vapors with mercury. Um, it's not in this handwriting, but, you know, I'm... I, any little detail, anyone writing anything could mean something, right? Could mean something. Who wrote that? Not, there's not many uh, writing about his, uh, on, on his photographs about chemicals. So if someone wrote something, they might have known something. Um, and so this tells me that this is the 1841 um, modification of the 1839 process. And it's the only one that I found. So it'd be nice to kind of verify that. I don't know. But it's a nice kind of... Um, uh, surprise, thanks for the Getty for the images. Uh, and this is, I apologize, SFP. Uh, they're not good images. I took them from uh, online different sources. They're very high contrast. But you can see in their album, uh, they have a lot of negatives. Actually, I start on page six, but in their album, page three, right away, he has negatives. And he has all kinds of colors. You can see he's really experimenting. Uh, and then in, on, on 18, you can see he's doing a negative and a positive. Uh, he has lots of negatives. And then here, this last page, uh, there's the iodine. It really reminds me of uh, uh, direct positives, but they're negatives. And that just brings me to the direct positive. I'm just going to throw this in here because people are always thinking that this is his first process. But as I just said, it's a negative is his first process. Just throwing this in here, it's a process verbal, which means he went in that day on 24th of February, 1840, to the Academy of Science, and they read the letter immediately. It wasn't sealed. It wasn't signed. It's basically open source, right? Everyone knows immediately what this recipe is. I just thought I'd throw that in there. And oh, I, you know what? It totally missed a slide. We missed my slide. Let me go back for a second um, of my experiments. Sorry. Oh, it's totally, there's one in between here. OK. <laughs> I, ha I have some experiments. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, I did some experiments, and they're not showing up. But um, basically, um, when you start doing these processes, you know, he doesn't give percentages. Do a bit of, do a bit of this, do a bit of that. You know, he, what kind of paper is he using? Um, you know, sizing matters. Uh, you know, the water's different, the chemical's different, everything's different. So at first you start doing it, you do contact uh, images, and then once you get going, you can do it outside. So if you want to come see my images, I have some. I don't know why it's not showing up there. So let's just move along. So then it's the, um, his third process, which is a negative process. Uh, he uh, wrote it on uh, October 13th, 1845. He deposited the same day. But it was opened October 23rd, 1974. He's not alive in 1974. So what happened? So with the plea cachete, the only people who can open these letters are people who write them or family members. For whatever reason, he never opened this. And it makes me think, because you know, in 1841, he says he has three processes. This is another process, but maybe he decided it, it wasn't good. It wasn't, he didn't have to prove himself on that process. Maybe he didn't use it for long. Maybe he went to the other process afterwards. So it's, it's kind of interesting. So it, 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 and because I was doing this, all of this research um, from at the time uh, in Rochester, it kind of, I kind of missed it. I kind of missed it. And uh, you have to kind of come here to see it. So um, there's the letter. He's writing a bit more. I'm happy. Happy. A little more information that he's giving us, so I'm happy. And I didn't do it because I didn't see it, right? I didn't, I, I didn't know it existed. So, but basically, he says, uh, use English wove paper. It's written in the letter. Use English wove paper. He says, this is a negative process like Talbot. 
and make positives, to make positives follow Talbot's method. He says it right in the paper. He also says, this is for Art at the Getty, he says, French paper does not work for this process. Use English Wattman. It's right in the letter, it's great. But he is working on more tests in order to use French papers. He really wants to use French papers. So, you know, he's, he's using um, hydrochloric acid, he's using iodide bromide, he does silver nitrate, he tells you what, uh, what is aperture in the camera is. This is amazing. He tells you latent la la image. He tells you he's using gallic acid. You know, but by that time, um, calotype is out. Everyone knows it. So it's great. It's, it's really great information. So it'd be, that's that one. And then here, I was thinking, well, give me some examples. So I looked back at SFPay, and I found these two. One was from 1845, September, and the other one is 1845. But the question still is, remember 1841, he says three processes. So is this this process or is this the next process? Because he has one more. So it's a little confusing. So this is his final process. It's written, he wrote two letters, one on the 10th, one on the 14th. He deposited them on the 14th in 1846 and it, he opened it a few years later in 1851. And there they are, the two letters, plus the one letter he wrote in 51. And I just put that has a nice stamp, has this HB, it's really nice to have, to see that. So there are the two letters. Again, he's writing on Ministry of Finance stationery. Maybe he's rushed, he's writing at work. It's interesting. Um, and in this letter, it's very confusing, the first letter on the 10th, he's modifying um, a September 1846. Uh, letter and it's kind of confusing what's going on so I'm still trying to figure this out the next one the, the other one the later one the December 14th um, he writes um, that this is very interesting he writes he can make 40,000 copies from this negative without fading Martin without fading they can make 40,000 don't worry about the negatives <laughs> so and then the letter that he asked to open it, the one in 1851, there he is, look at all the writing, he can write, I'm so happy. So, um, and he writes the beginning, he admires the magnificent results that photography has reached in recent times, thanks to the improvements made by various methods used. So he's watching other photographers, he's listening, he's, and he's always been improving. If you follow his history, he's always taking photography, he's always improving, and he's going to the next step. And he says, there's one problem to be solved, and he has a problem with low light, and um, he wants to be able to take photography in all weather, which, you know, I've been here for a week. It's been pretty gray, pretty gray. I saw 10, 10 minutes of sun, so uh, I can see why he wants all, all levels of, of light. He wants it inside, outdoor. But he says, I have achieved this with this method. He can do it with this method. He said it. I don't, I don't know. He said it. You have to believe him. So here's the process. Uh, and it's great, he gives you grams, he's very specific, he used potassium iodine, bromide, salt, potassium um, cyanide, and then he soaks it uh, in a for a few minutes. And then he says, if you want a good coating, use uh, Renault's vacuum pump machine. Well, what's that? <laughs> That's driving me crazy. So there's these images I found of uh, Victor Renault. We saw this negative. Yesterday, I think, we saw a negative of this one yesterday. And there's these images of this vacuum pump. Uh, there's not much written about this, but what I could um, put piece together is that you wash the paper, you place all the papers together, you remove the air with the vacuum, you impregnate the papers with a solution, and in half an hour, you can get 50 sheets of paper. You know, he is producing lots of stuff. He's a producer. He's not just like, making one or two things. He's going for it. So I, I did not have a vacuum pump. So I, you know, you gotta figure it out. So I, this, I did want my best. So, um, so I did a little, this is what they did. They did vapors with iodine and uh, hydrochloric acid. And uh, you just kind of put it on top and it changes color. And it goes from the white of the paper to the yellow to an orange. And it ends almost like a very purpley, orangey color. And then you just wave it off. Um, to get the excess off. And then when it's dry, you put it, you float it on um, silver nitrate and it turns back to the paper um, color. And it's really, it's really pretty to watch. Then uh, you hang to dry and once it's dry, 
Uh, you um, put it in water again to wash out excess silver. And then, uh, like I said, um, you do everything, when you're doing these things, you know, you're not even sure if it's gonna work, so we, I use a lot of um, UV machines and to test out uh, contact, uh, contact printing, just to make sure, uh, because I, you know, you could be doing it totally wrong, and it's a, it's a, it's a lot of work to get the camera. This is a th th three sub-basements in the George Eastman house. It's a long walk upstairs to the sun. So I, we do it like that first, expose in camera, and then to bring out, it's a latent image, to bring it out, use ga gallic acid. And then you fix it with hypo. He, do, he uses hypo. These are, these are, this, this slide works. So there's some of my examples. You can see I was doing contact sheets. And then I finally felt a little comfortable and I went out and they weren't that great. I need more time, but I'm starting to do it in the camera. And, and these are the fountainheads. Um, like I said, once you get in the camera, you know, a cloud goes over, you know, uh, the paper's different, it gets, it gets hot, it gets cold. It changes a lot. It changes everything you do. You have to kind of start all over from scratch. So then I started thinking about it and I was at SF Pay the other day and I'm trying to find, find you know, other examples with text in it. And this one I found online and it said that it had um, vapor of acid and, you know, and I was like, what is that? Where is that written? So I went, I talked to Vincent, and we had a big discussion about where it was written because it's actually not on the piece. It's not on the negative. And we discussed, and what we think it is, it was on a, a, a it was mounted, and it was on a mount. So here is the back of the print, and uh, up on this top corner, and you can see this, and there's remnants of a mount. So possibly this, the, the text was on the mount, uh, Force is actually here on the back of the mount. So possibly it was on the mount and uh, they transcribed it in the catalog information. But then the question is, is which process is this? <laughs> is this, the eight, is this, is this um, because we're now dealing with still three processes, which process? So um, it is still a bit confusing. And then there's this one at SFP as well, the negative. I think the positive is in the Getty album. And it says uh, it's the first type of done in the new process, uh, which, uh, which could be the 1846 uh, or the 1845 process. Still, we don't know. And he uses French paper. He did it. Yay. He figured it out. So um, that's great. I was really proud of Bayard for figuring it out. Uh, so that's great, because it was a big, big challenge of his uh, for finding paper. Uh, so, and now I'm just gonna quickly go through this, because uh, out of um, about 170 negatives at SFP, which are all online now, thank you, um, 18 in total actually have our, um, has, his, has his HB and a date on it. And so that's great, you know, we can kind of guess that those were done at that time, but again, which of the three processes are these? Because you know, at the very beginning, he said, I did three processes. So it's still a big question of which three they are. Um, and then it just needs more uh, research. So these, these are just uh, images of, uh, of all of them. They're all about the same size, uh, going through the different uh, years. So um, it's, it's been a long um, time, you know, 19 years of working on Bayard. And, and every, every time, even this conference, I've learned so much more. You know, I keep learning about Bayard and I keep putting the dots together. And um, I, I think there needs to be testing, of course, um, but um, unfortunately there's none in Canada. And uh, anyways, I just hope, um, what I've learned here today too is we learn from, there's all these small photographers that we don't really know much about and I think they have the secrets too. And if, if everybody kind of, <laughs> if everybody in this room took a photographer and the next 18 years studied it, <laughs> we'd be doing really good. So that's just a pipe dream. Anyways, I'll continue with Bayard because I, I, I think he, he's a really special person and I think he doesn't get a lot of credit. And thank you. Merci Tania pour cette euh, présentation toujours euh, très intéressante à, à propos de, de Bayard et, et qui manifestement euh, 
prolonge l'héritage et la tradition de l'alchimie dans la préphotographie et, et, et dans la découverte de, des, des premiers procédés photographiques. Et, et dans, les dans les inventeurs potentiels de la photographie, euh, Bayard est certainement celui qui a fait le, la, la preuve du plus grand hermétisme, pour reprendre un terme cher aux alchimistes. Et c'est vrai que son, son parcours est extrêmement difficile à, à déchiffrer euh, deux siècles plus tard. Mais bon, là, là où il y a une volonté, il y a un chemin. Et je pense que par rapport à l'énergie que vous avez déployée, je ne me fais aucun souci sur la suite de cette aventure photographique. <rire> voilà, donc euh, on peut passer aux questions euh, dans la salle pour celles et ceux qui voudraient euh, poser des, des questions à Tania par rapport à sa démarche expérimentale. Le sujet est trop hermétique. Bon, je me permets une, une question donc, quand même, parce que le, le, je suis toujours étonné euh, par la confrontation euh, des deux carnets euh, extrêmement euh, mystérieux, euh, celui qui est déposé au Getty et, et celui qui est déposé euh, à la Société française de, de, de photographie, euh, qui sont très différents. Euh, Est-ce est qu'on peut établir des, une forme de, de traçabilité, je, je dirais, par rapport au parcours de ces deux carnets et par rapport aux différences qu'ils peuvent entretenir euh, dans l'œuvre de Bayard L'entrée le, le, dans les problématiques de Bayard commence souvent par la, la consultation euh, visuelle de, de ces carnets, euh, qui posent plus de questions euh, qui n'apportent de réponses euh, à ceux qui les consultent. Et euh, est-ce que l'on peut, est-ce qu'il y a vraiment des différences en termes de, de cheminement euh, dans ces deux carnets, euh, celui qui est arrivé au Getty, celui qui est arrivé euh, à la SFP, est-ce qu'ils peuvent être considérés comme tout à fait complémentaires ou procédant de démarches complètement différentes vis-à-vis euh, -vis de l'inventeur I think it's best that uh, the Getty and um, SFP talk, but basically uh, how I understand it is uh, the SFP album is, is the earlier album and it does have many more experiments. Uh, it does have all the direct positives in it. If I recall, the Getty has direct positives, but they're not part of the album. I'm looking at Karen right now. They're not part of the album and um, it's, It, it's it's kind of questionable uh, who wrote things in the album, and the Getty album has a modern image at the front of where he lived, and it, um, and it's mostly um, positives in in the in the Getty album, and not just Bayard's, right? There's a there's a few others in there, um, so so they're quite different. They're quite different, and and in and the SFP there's not much written in it, but the Getty there's a little bit more little handwritten pencil, and it's almost erased in parts. And the size is different too. They're actually physically different looking albums. 